compile is a oh, oh, today's class we start with a very welcome message to you and uh, thank you for coming i particularly compiler why you are learning compiler that is the first thing uh, we have to understand because the compiler is is very very interesting thing the more day by day it is very interesting why because the hardware is much varying the whenever you are grown up uh, you probably see the intel motherboard or amd board now you can see the arm chip now we see the uh, fpga chips now apple is producing his own chip uh, but even google is coming his own chip so hardware is becoming varied and varied all these things probably from your uh, computer computer organization you know uh, there is earlier it's a von neumann machine now we have multiple cores maybe your cpu have eight cores if you have i5 or i7 you have eight cores your your mobile phone has eight cores that is eight cpus are there and not only that the programs uh, is running maybe not your machine maybe a different machine at a at a google machine or at anywhere so <laughs> chips are computing powers and everywhere it's being replicated so day by day the compiler is becoming tough why because your source program here more coming towards a natural language because you see in your that your python is more like a english language uh, c is more like an assembly language uh, so you are telling the machine what to do everything but in python you are not telling that you are basically translating so the compiler has to be sophisticated much more sophisticated so and, and that's why the compiler the name goes there but it may be interpreted so compiler interpreted is the same thing and it is the it is for the communication tool uh, to a computer and so that it can do lots of job because in any computer technology it is there like artificial intelligence uh, it is in built in dynamic programming it is there so the, the compiler is the basically hot spot or hot box of all the good technologies or relevant technologies of computer science say what is the computer science whatever the best part you have learned that is the say data structure data structure the how to put your uh, data in your memory in primary memory that there is compiler that is the best example that there is a there is an area that the compiler puts all this information there will come to this and data structure algorithm and everything the uh, stages of the compiler source program and then it is lexical analyzer and uh, this screen is visible Yes, yes yeah sir. right so the uh, today i will try to cover the uh, today i try to cover the lexical analyzer and uh, then uh, try to go to the syntax analyzer this is the toughest part this is i'll come what is lexical analyzer the lexical analyzer is basically give a token i think uh, not now or maybe some of you if you go to a bank around 5 10 years back if you want to take the 10000 rupees from your bank you go with your passbook and or a cheque book you go to a counter they will give a copper token am i correct or not tell me have you seen this maybe not right now maybe up 5 to 10 years back whenever you wish to take a 10000 rupees from a local public sector bank you go with your cheque book or your passbook you go to a counter and you are given a copper token am i am i, am I sensible have you got it everybody yes, so, yes sir yeah that is called token generation Yes, that is the same thing. Absolutely, same thing happens at compiler. So that is a token because whenever you go to anybody who wish to take ten rupees or you have to take one lakh rupees, everybody was given a copper token. The copper token is a symbol of that bank. Say you are taking Indian Overseas Bank, a Indian Overseas Bank, and if 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 you take a token and if you do not come back uh, at the before the bank close, other they will be searching. They can. they might ring you because at the end of the day all token should come to the bank okay so that's it so what is token uh, lexical analyzer it whenever you write uh, sentence uh, compile is uh, a program first of all your whole program is like is a symbol you remember the our uh, grammar uh, any grammar you have a uh, uh, lexical side is the n is the non terminals uh, v is the variables and the s is the production symbol uh, and s is the start 
A0 is the start symbol and uh, and A0 and A0 is the start symbol. Remember, the start symbol is here is the total program unit. Total program unit and you take a single sentence and say um, variable is uh, int underscore 1. Say I am taking a C length. So, what it can be for you say main uh, that you forget that then the declaration of integer. Say I say int i underscore 1 equal to 0 semicolon. So, here I can write i i i i i i 56 times underscore 1 equal to 1. So, same value the only the you basically get a token. So, compiler so that is the reason we always tell to programmers so whenever you define your uh, define your variable names don't be very cryptic about it instead of i you should say loop i or instead of a variable name say uh, savings account balance don't write sb underscore ac underscore bell because some it, it may be other programmer can uh, take it in another way so always write savings underscore account underscore balance so that that is a particular account you can always name so actually that name uh, will not go to your a dot out file it will go as a token so the names can be big it is better names don't be too big but name should be name like if, if my name should be there in computer i would prefer somnath underscore roy choudhury not s underscore Rai Chaudhuri because s underscore Rai Chaudhuri may be lots of people are there but Somnath underscore Rai Chaudhuri may not be there. So that is a I think in our C language we always tell students that you write the variable name as explicitly as possible with some standards and whenever a variable is constant so we tell you to write it in capital letters. Whenever we always uh, tell that do not write the uh, uh, don't write the variable in camel case. Camel case means S capital then uh, Somnath underscore not underscore R capital that is called camel case letter. But we say no we write the Somnath S capital underscore R capital Roy Chodhu. So lexical analyzer will teach you that ultimately everything will be as a tokenized and then everything will be same <coughs> same size maybe uh, there will be token. So, you give explicit variable name because whenever the your program would be generated, the variable name will not be there, it will be replaced by a token. Okay, we will come to that, that uh, the, what the first case is very simply handled by a finite state machine. Uh, why the finite state machine? Because uh, that is, you, lexical analysis is always done by a finite state machine because finite state machine is nothing but a pattern matcher. Uh, so, you what can be the same in your first programming languages? So, it, it could be either a, a variable declaration and you know the variable declaration should start with some A, B, C, D and uh, it must then the alphanumeric, okay, it cannot have uh, some percentage, cannot have space. So, it can be de definitely checked by your regular expression. So, and you know that regular expression is nothing but a uh, it can be done by a finite state machine. So, your uh, in lexical analyzer, uh, we have a regular, uh, a regular expression checker of uh, integer, floating point number, real number, um, your variable name, whether it is a variable name is legal or not. If there is a keyword like if, then, else, you cannot have variable name if or then. So, uh, or you have a keyword like opening brace and closing braces. It is nothing but your program is nothing but consists of some uh, reserve words, C reserve words and some tokens and they all saved in a symbol table manager. This is very interesting case. So, whenever the, the there may be in a program there may be two or three passes of the compiler. The first pass is it, it will just create token and put it a symbol table. Where the symbol table will be? Symbol table will be in the primary memory. It is a very interesting data structure. It will be basically a dictionary. I think you know Python and then you can understand a dictionary. The, it is a basically a dictionary where the uh, variable name and its uh, 
automatically the index would be a, a number would be generated whenever you go i coming back to the my first example whenever you go to bank you will get a token so the token generation and all these things will be done then uh, whenever at this stage the program is consists of tokens only okay uh, tokens only and then we will check by our parser uh, the parser you know uh, and your grammar you know all grammars are basically deterministic context free grammar why deterministic context free grammar last uh, i have sent you video because uh, your regular grammar is good but it cannot have candle handle functions it cannot handle uh, opening parenthesis and number of opening parenthesis number of closing parenthesis so you need a if, if you if you have the procedural programming then you need a function call and you have to match opening brace and closing brace these two things are very essential another thing is essential is if then else statement if then else so these all these things so one is uh, opening brace closing brace and matching an opening brace closing brace then the if then else statement okay and then the procedure call it is the procedural programming so you need to have uh, fun repeated calling of function um, that cannot be done by a regular language your regular language what regular language can give regular language can give that whether it is a variable whether it is a integer whether for that can give it can generate token now this this is the parsing stage then we we'll, we can see the to series of tokens and we have some language rules then the compiler would check yes it has been legally developed from this okay so that is it all the parsing and there are two famous parsing techniques one is top down parsing and another is bottom up parsing uh, initially top down parsing looks easier for humans but for but but basically computers are different from humans computer can some some stupid jobs at much faster rate so bottom up parsing we found it computer scientists have found it is very good for checking legality of the check so there will be lots of debate will be uh, sorry extremely sorry yeah, yeah. so there will be lots of debate in the, this is the syntax analysis um, stage so here uh, today i'll more cover this is a lexical analysis uh, there is a program called lexer Uh, and the token is called token sometimes called lexemes and all are stored in a symbol table manager what is the sim structure of symbol table manager i will come to that it is basically every information of your program the variable uh, not only variable integer variable uh, floating point variable uh, of all uh, functions and what is the parameters of the function scope of the functions everything is at the symbol table manager it is kind of, it's a dictionary it can be uh, if, if python dictionary is the best example uh, it is a kind of lookup table it, so it has to be pretty fast because this symbol table has to be used in all the subsequent stages okay so uh, just overview of a compiler uh, the lexical analysis is the whole part taken by the finite state machine several finite state machine uh, some one machine checks whether it is a real where or another is whether it is a keywords how many you know c have 254 keywords or python have some keywords so they are taking tokens and here the it is now the all the, the syntax uh, are basically or tokens are generated and we whether we check whether it is legally generated or not and that is called the parsing technique then the call semantic technique semantic techniques whether i am putting floating point value in integer or integer into floating point point value or a character into floating point value so all this uh, coercion type of whether it is legal or not this is done by semantic analyzer after it is passed through then the intermediate code generator you might ask why intermediate code generator because nowadays you you write a code here but you are not sure that your code will be run on this machine or at remote machine so or it may be my many machine or maybe very virtual machine so first is intermediate code is independent of machine so that independent of machine is generated uh, with the rules and then code optimizer so that 
how if I make such little optimization, initialization here and there, that the compiler are making so intelligent. That is a, here the comes the point artificial intelligence. Artific the, the compiler is getting more, more and more intelligent. And that is the reason we are using the more powerful code. And then the code generator, then the already target machine we have fixed. So there is a final code generator. So the one is intermediate code generator and other is final code generator. Then the ultimate program uh, would be a dot out or exe and at every stages error may come out like whenever you write a program by gcc or cc the, you always see that at this line this program can be this line this can be program it generally not only single error it compiler is a time consuming process so it will try to catch as many as errors not only one error it gives the signal it will give at least at least 10 errors or 5 errors so that you can uh, which line number everything and so this error handling and our symbol table it is a lifetime of, of a compiler and if you want the program in debugging mode probably I have taken your class in C I have told you how to make uh, debugging mode on so GDB new debugger so then this all this information with this so you can it is helpful to debug the code let us go to the next slide I see yeah this is uh, this is the compiler basically the stages can be in two stages one is analysis portion this is the left hand side is the analysis portion and right is the synthesis portion the analysis means I have told is uh, it basically token then uh, syntax checking uh, the uh, it is the top down parsing or bottom up mostly now it is bottom up parsing then semantic an intermediate code generation. This is a front end and from intermediate code generation to synthesis, synthesis then again we are making compact code uh, then the lots of uh, artificial intelligence techniques are there so that your code should be intelligent and should be bug free with the synthesis portion. Both portion are important. So, just, just a minute. Yeah, this is uh, any other book. I think uh, the some some new information is a source program, lexical analyzer. It is so lexical. Some books it is a scanner. Both both are same. It will it will be output will be tokens and some books say lexemes. Same. This is the parsing. This is important area. The parsing. You know the most of the programming language are the context deterministic context free grammar with LR one. Okay, the parsing. Then the parsing action. This is abstract syntax. This is nothing but a parsing tree. Uh, there is one kind of is abstract syntax tree. We will we'll come to that. Uh, this is the semantic tables. Uh, this semantic tables, this is not that important, but it is really. But our exam point of view, 10 minutes are there. Exam point of view, the parsing is more important. Uh, but lots of question comes on one or two questions come some semantic then translate uh, this is control flow data flow register allocation you know a, a computer has many registers how to allocate registers efficiently code emission this is a, another from another book i i mentioned the book where it is let's go to the next slide yeah here you see this is a c program it is is it visible this c program anyone please Yes sir. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, this uh, this is the uh, first line. Position is in position initialized with initial plus rate multiplied by sixty. This is the sentence C language. And now lexical analyzer instead of position, it will say ID one. And what is ID one? ID one is shown here. This is a symbol table. The ID one is position. ID two is initial. ID three is rate. Now everything is tokenized. Okay. So that is the reason I am telling you can use a big name. It does not issue much. The, your variable name should be a, a short one. So you use the big name so that the program is readable. So whenever after lexical analysis it is it is, is a token here and then it is a syntax analyzer. The syntax analyzer output is abstract syntax tree. This is called same as parse tree. Parse tree and abstract syntax tree are equivalent. Here, 
only thing is that your assignment operation is as a node and leaf is the variable. See here all the operation is the node, see here star it is node and leaf is the variable. Here id3 into 60 it is the operation, so it is after this computation it goes to here, after the computation goes to here, it is assigned to id3. So this is abstract syntax tree. So not everything from every uh, stream of tokens you cannot generate the unique abstract syntax tree. Then we will raise error, then we call syntax error. If there is no syntax error, that means the sentences are generated as per the rules of the grammar, then you can should get abstract syntax tree. Then after abstract syntax tree, the semantic analyzer, it will check the is whether it is correct thing or not. It is not syntax will check. It will check whether you are putting integer into floating point number because in some language it is not allowable. You have to, like you know in Java, Python, everywhere you have to cast it. Otherwise, you have to cast it. So, you have to take aware that I am doing it willfully, then you have to cast it by int or float, so that willfully. Otherwise, inadvertently it can go. So, that type of checking is done by the your semantic analyzer. Then the intermediate code, and this intermediate code is some it will take as a target processor is a virtual processor and now most of the machines are the virtual machines. Take the Java or Python, it will run on uh, Macintosh, it will run on I, your uh, Intel, it can run on ARM chips on your mobile, so it is all virtual machines. So this is intermediate code generation and then code optimization, one kind of code optimization, then another code generator. And then it will be repeated on your target machine. So, two types of code generations are there, and this all part of the synthesis portion. But the most important part is analysis portion. Any question till now? Symbol table is a very interesting thing. It should be generated by dictionary. Okay. Say so I am. This is the. I am taking it uh, more precisely. This is the your initial. It is a string of characters. It is. It you can say line of programs or you can see the string of program. So, lexical analyzer put it, it like in a tokenized form and in symbol table. So, at the first, after this lexical analyzer, all your symbol table is filled it up. Yeah, so lexical analysis phase reads the characters in the source program and groups them into a stream of tokens in which each token presents a logically cohesive sequence of characters such an identifier or keyword like if while etc a punctuation character or a multi character operator like this operator assignment operator the characteristics form a token is called lexemes so in sometimes if it's a, in some books it is a lexemes and more uh, uh, standard books say token both are same lexemes are same thing, uh, source program, tokens, get nest token, parts, I think I have, this is same. Uh, I, have, I am giving a, a different uh, picture. I found it, uh, if you have a different flow diagram from different books, your understanding will be better. Uh, it is my idea, sometimes plethora of examples. So, it is from another, yeah. So, if you see the scanner, tokenizer, legs are the same. Uh, this is a regular expression grammar. Yeah, this is I must say. So, in the basically your uh, at this stage, you do not employ push down automata, you do not use a Turing machine. You might say, why not? I have a powerful machine. Not required. Uh, you, the, here, you have to take generate token. Here, only the regular expression grammar is required. So, that is a great thing. This is a this is a regular expression. It is running on your same CPU, but CPU has a regular expression grammar. It is a, like finite state machine. It is basically a finite statement. The input program, a lines of statement, uh, this is symbol table, it is a basically nothing but a uh, dictionary data structure, you know Python, the dictionary is an absolute good reference uh, or it can be done in a uh, array, it can be done in a table, but dictionary is the best example. This is a tokenized, 
this is a parser and uh, this is the always the context free grammar uh, because we know all the programming languages is nothing but a context free grammar but here i must say it is context free grammar you know two types deterministic context free grammar and non deterministic context free grammar but it should be deterministic context free grammar because you know the non deterministic context free grammar you need a non deterministic push down automata which is very very difficult which is absolutely thank you sir uh -huh.